Good morning. Yeah, so we got a, a good crowd today. And uh, this is one of my favorite subjects. I know I, I, you've seen me walk through our prompt database quite a few times on these things. And, I, you know, I've seen um, a lot of clients that we work with, they uh, they use Word documents or they use other documents to try to do it. And I don't know what maybe y'all could tell me, what are you using right now to manage your prompts? Corinne, are you using anything? Word, Word documents, nothing Word sophisticated. Documents. Yeah, I need a better yeah. way. Yeah, there's got to be a better way, right? <laughs> Don, it's Jalyn. I'm just using basic Google Sheets so that my team can see it. I write down oh, really? what my intended task is and then the prompt, nice. and that's it. Okay, all right. Well, Jalyn, we have to do better. Okay. I know. I can't we wait. We have to do better. <laughs> Yeah, there's a whole lot to this. Um, you know, fortunately, I have a, a daughter whose name you might recognize on there, Caroline. Um, so Caroline has been a Notion freak for years, and she's the one who got me into it. <clears throat> I saw some of the stuff that she was doing for uh, some of the companies she worked for, and I was like, dang, I didn't know it was so powerful. And so when we started to get really aggressive with various tools like ChatGPT and Claude, I thought, you know, I can't keep having Google Docs all over the place. And just when you finesse one, you know, I don't know about you, but but my conversations are are miles deep, you know, in ChatGPT or Claude and, and trying to go, which one was it? Oh, God, there was one of them where I really got this thing right. You know, I kind of got sick of that. So that's when I thought, all right, I'm going to create a database so that everybody in our organization can use it and we can update it. And then we can migrate them in a workflow that shows, you know, whether they're being suggested or whether they're being reviewed or edited or tested or actually ready for, for, for production is what we would call it. All right. And it just made a whole lot more sense. Because instead of having everybody going back and forth um, doing the same thing, you know, we we could just go to the library and say, oh, somebody's already done this and it's approved. Cool. I'm going to use it. Now, I'm going to show you some pretty slick tricks with Notion. How many of you actually have Notion? Okay. A lot of hands up. Okay, cool, cool. So you know how powerful it is, and it's uh, it's way more powerful than um, you probably have imagined if you haven't looked at it yet. I mean, the cool thing is, is it's free, um, but as you roll it up into your organization, you'll probably want a more paid version, and uh, that's what we've got. Um, you can integrate it with Slack now. You can integrate it with a lot of other tools. So... What I'm going to do, uh, I think we still have some people coming in, but what I'm going to do is show you how we actually set it up. Uh, John Thompson, you use PowerPoint? Where are you, John? PowerPoint. Sorry, I live there. <laughs> you live in PowerPoint? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay. It has That's a an interesting. It's got a search feature, sorry, and it can put an image there. Okay, cool. And Brett, what do you say? I copied John and have started setting up Notion. Okay, cool. Uh, is there a Slack channel for this group? Uh, no, but there is a circle group for this group. So you could join the circle group. Uh, you do that by requesting replays. Uh, I'll get Caroline or Kelly to throw in the link. and So you can just go over there and you... you Fill that out and it'll automatically set you up so you can get access to it. So um, anyway, uh, let's see. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to roll with it. Hey, Mitch, good to see you, buddy. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hope Mitch you're feeling has his better. camera on again. Yeah, I'm, I'm golden now. Like I was telling Corinne, it wasn't as bad as it uh, as it could have been. Uh, I still I still put in a 12-hour day. <laughs> just just hold up in my own place. <laughs> All right, so let's get busy. Let me move some of this junk out of my way. Um, and I wish Max would support three monitors. I, I, it would be so much easier if I had a war room here of monitors. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, hey, and, John. Yeah. John, I've got a I've got a hack for you using a <laughs> of a hub um, to get to really? it for a Mac to use three. By the way, really? I can okay. I, I can send, send that to you. To you. I yeah, will. send it to me. What I was threatening to do is uh, MacBook Air and three monitors. Go, David. Okay, I, you probably got a hack too. Because what I was threatening to do, and unfortunately, I think I left it at home. Is I got a, um, what do you call it, an iPad Pro, and I know that you know you can make that an external monitor. And I was thinking that would be cool. That way, I could like have chat set up somewhere, and I could have my screen set up. But, Anyway, I'm just too much of a gadget freak, I guess. Okay, so let's see. Let me share the old screen. And again, you know, y'all uh, bear with me because I won't be able to see you. So feel free, like I said, to unmute and uh, just chat away. All right, because I'll, I'll, I'll be able to see some of you, but I won't be able to watch the chat and chew gum at the same time. All right, so... Here we go. As you can see, this is ours. Um, and what I want to do is kind of walk you through what we do. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to build this. All right. Looks complicated. Really not too terribly complicated, though. Um, but it's so, so powerful. And you can see that we have different filters up here. Uh, these are different views. All right. And so what we've done is we've taken all of our prompts that, you know, and again, what I, I just want you to know that when we're building prompts, we are building them for ourselves or for clients. We are not just doing novelty prompts is what I would call them. And, you know, you can go on YouTube and somebody goes, this prompt is going to make your life so much better. And it's such a bogus prompt that they really just ask chat GPT to create a prompt and it comes out and then you try to use it and you're like, ah, oh, this doesn't do anything. So, we're, these aren't those prompts. This is legitimate work prompts. And what we've done is we've kind of divided them uh, into segments. Uh, these are this one, the one we call the quick start. Those are the ones that we're going to be giving you guys when we deliver this entire database to you. Those are uh, on the house. And then we have another one we call marketing essentials, another one that we call advanced marketer, and another one for AI marketing mastery. So they're, they get more and more complicated as you uh, move forward with them. So for instance, if we get into the mastery, you can see these are what we call prompt chains. And there's several prompts that you chain together and they make pretty significant documents. Um, in fact, one of these down here, uh, Corinne, you'd be interested in this one. This is the one that has generated me close to $100,000 in revenue just by giving value to a client. Uh, so we have several of those in there. Anyway, uh, let's get rolling. Oh, yeah. And one of the other things that we do, uh, you can see now these are different views that are just list views. But we use it as a workflow as well. And so we'll take these things and move them from testing into approved, et cetera. And that's really helpful. And you can connect this to your Slack channel. So as soon as something changes and you can dictate exactly how. But you can say, hey, send a message to the Slack channel that this new prompt has been approved. So now everybody in the organization knows that you've got a new prompt. All right. Any questions so far? Now that you've just seen, seen a chocolate mess. All right. So let's get busy. Okay. So the first thing you want to do, and I'm not going to teach you how to, you know, download Notion or any of that stuff. I'm just going to dive right in and, and, you know, it's easy enough to figure out. But I am going to show you a really big shortcut to getting this thing started. And I got my little list up here because there's a whole lot of fields that we're going to create to make this thing useful. And hopefully, if I have enough time, we can go through and look at a couple of prompts when we're finished. All right. So we have ours divided up into little spaces. And I'm just going to start straight up here. And what we do is we would just create a little page. And it's going to just create a blank page. And we're going to start putting data inside of this page. So we're just going to call this, um, we'll call it uh, blank. All right, so this is our blank prompt database. All right, now, once you click onto this button, you're going to hit a slash and it's going to give you a whole lot of options. All right, and what we want to do is cheat the system. And I'm going to go all the way down 
in here. And let me see, where is it? Ah. Really? Where are the templates? Uh, for a template, I think you're just going to make a new page. Or unless, are you looking for, are you trying to create your own Well, what I was trying to do is, for... is actually insert one. I had this all down yesterday and it was going great, but it was so the, much faster. The table or the list? Maybe? Yeah, it was a, it was a list, but, but you can insert, you can go to the template uh, thing. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the drill. Well, see, I already did this, but where? Oh, here we go. More templates. Whew. All right. So this is it. <clears throat> so what I do is I'm just going to go down here and choose this one on the product side. It's called User Research Database. All right. I like it because it's pretty much set up and it's got a lot of things and you can just swap them out. But it gets you there a whole lot faster. All right. So I'm going to just pop that in there. And there we go. Okay, so this is the one, hang on a minute. I'll just go ahead and delete this one while I'm at it. And then we're gonna just call this our, I'll just call it a shell, okay? All right, so now that you see all these things, we can get rid of those. We're just gonna hit select all up here. We're gonna kill them off. And then what I like to do is decide which of these things I want and which ones I don't want. And then I'm going to start adding new fields. Each one of these things is essentially a field or a, a field type. And what you can do is like, if I were to go over here and just type in uh, something, all right, you can see how it flips over here to open. And now you can see the fields that you've got that are also in that horizontal view, all right? We're going to change all these out. So all I'm going to do is go up here and you can see I've got layout and this is where we would go and change the different style layouts. We can go from a table view to a list view to um, different types of views. You can see all these things. The board view is that timeline where I'm moving them progressively through a workflow, but we're going to stick with table view. All right. And then in the properties, this is where I can add a lot of these different views, all right? So for instance, in name, this is where I'm just going to call this the prompt name, okay? And all of these other ones, I don't necessarily need them, um, but I do have a few that I like. And so what I'm gonna do in order to get rid of them, I'm just gonna, delete them as I don't need them. So I don't need a completion time. And I don't really need a date per se. Okay, now let's go through these and we'll start adding the ones that we want. But I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to make this, you see how it's already got some of uh, its own little workflows in here but I'm going to just change the names of these. I'm gonna call this one type, and this will give me an idea of what type of prompt is this, right? And we have several different types. We have what we call a prompt, obviously, but then we also have a prompt stack. We have in ChatGPT, you know, you have custom instructions, and you also have um, context prompts, these all go into this concept of prompt stacking that I talked about earlier. All right. So all we'll do over here is we're going to say prompt and this we'll call, uh, I'm going to try not to get too complicated with this custom. All right. And I'll like kind of leave it at that. All right. So now you can see that I've got the type over here. And if I were to go and try to enter one, my thing shows up. I can also go in here and I could change the colors of all these things, right? So when you pull it down, it'll do anything that you want, okay? All right, so then let's see, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go 
add a few more. I'm just going to go ahead and start throwing them in here. We're going to have text, and this is going to be if I can get my fingers on the right uh, keys. Add a um, we have one that we do a select on. It used to be a multi-select. Now we just decided to make it a select. And that one is for the AI tool itself. Okay. And it used to be that like, which like, okay, well, this works for chat GPT and it works for Claude. But now we're finding that with Claude, we have to be a little bit more specific um, and a little bit more refined. So I've started to make this a one at a time thing. So if you create a prompt that works in ChatGPT, you can always clone it, modify it for Claude, and then change it over here. Hopefully I'm making sense. Okay, so we're going to just add some of these. We're going to say... etc. All right. And you can also change the order that they show up. Since most of ours are in this sequence, that's going to be the sequence that I pull them in. All right, so now we got that set up. And let's see what else we want to do. Um, we'll go with requirements. And let's go with stage. Um, stage is also going to be a select. And we'll add the various options for that. Okay. And I always like to put them in the right order. Somebody is going to request it. Somebody's going to start working on it. Somebody's going to start testing it, and then we'll approve it. Make sense? All right, so now we got that squared away. I also like to tell people, what's the purpose of this one? Now, in our case, um, we actually have a pull down for purpose. And I made this a text box here, but I wanna show you just how easily we can swap that out. So you see it says purpose over here. Now, what that means is, Anybody could write anything in this field, which gets kind of confusing the more you get, because if somebody spells something wrong, like copywriting or copy or writing, well, all, all three of those are essentially the same purpose. So I'd rather have a multi-select because sometimes it's, you know, it's something like that. So all we're going to do is we would go in here and we would edit the property and then we've just changed the type and we'd make it a multi-select. So you see how easy that's done. And then once you say it's a multi-select, then you can just fill in all of these things. Um, I don't know. We, you can come up with a whole bunch. We have a whole of them in there. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. We have some for analyzing things, et cetera. All right. So now we got that. And let's just take a look at what we have so far. All right. So I've got the name of the prompt. I've got what type is it? What's the status? Give me a description of it. In fact, I just don't want it to be descriptions. I want a single description. What's the tool that we're using? What are the requirements? Now, what do we mean by requirements? Well, in ChatGPT, specifically, you either have to have custom instructions on or you have to have it off or you have to have a specific plugin to make the prompt operate, right? So you wanna make sure you've got that covered in your instructions, um, I mean, in the requirements. The stage, of course, again, being the, what stage of development are we in? What's the purpose of it? Now we have other ones that we add in here for instructions. Man, I cannot get my fingers right today. All right, so instructions, and 
uh, <laughs> the key things now are what's the actual prompt, right? So we need to have a field for prompt and we need to have a follow up prompt. Now I have actually two follow-up prompts, follow-up prompt one and a follow-up prompt two. Anybody use follow-up prompts? I'll see the boys, let me check with them. Yeah. Okay. We use them all the time because once you, you know, you ask chat GPT or ask Claude to do something, you're not really totally wild about the results. And so you have to have it do something else to it, right? Refine it, make it better or add something else to it as another step. A lot of times with these AI generators, if you put too much in a prompt, then you get really poor results, right? So that's why we like to kind of break them into stages, especially if I'm trying to write a 1500 word blog post. You can't do that in one shot with ChatGPT. You can't say write a 100 or you know 1500 word blog post because it can't count. It won't do it. It'll it, and it also has the token limit that it's dealing with. So it's only going to process inside of that token limit. So that's why we always have follow-up prompts. And some of our more complicated chain prompts have it write sections at a time so that we can get more out of it. All right. Um, now, some of the other fields that you could add in there are what day was it updated? What day was it added? So you have a lot of other things that you could put in there and, and we can go through that. But that basically is it. Now that we've got it in there, we just need to throw in some prompts and make it work. Now, when you open it, you can see how the whole thing lays out, right? And you can fill in these things inside of, of this, or you could fill them out straight away inside the list itself. So it makes it really nice and convenient. Now, here's the thing that I think is tray cool. If I were to go into this, and then I go in here to stage, and I just move it as to requested, okay? So now it's requested, right? Watch this part. This is really, really cool. If I go into stage, and uh, here is where the, the automations are. I'm going to create a new automation. Now, I'm just going to show you how to do this. We haven't hooked ours up to Slack, but I just want to show you that it's possible, right? You just add a little trigger here, and then I would go into the stage, and then I would I could pick whatever stage I wanted it to be in. But I might just say, look, if this moves to approved, then I want to send a notification to, to a specific Slack channel that it's been approved. I could also do other things. Once I got it connected to Slack, if somebody specifically requested it, I could say, let so-and-so know that it's now moved on to a testing phase. You know, if you have somebody in your organization who's supposed to test it, then you just create a Slack channel for testing and you can move it in there. Does that make sense? Has anybody ever used notifications inside of this? No? It's really cool. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, a neat workflow that I just now noticed. There are also some AI fields in here that you could use. I'm not, I haven't really used them uh, yet because they basically make some reason stuff. You can't actually use AI inside of a field, which was a little bit frustrating for me because that's what I wanted. I wanted the tool to actually create a summary of what the prompt did. And I couldn't get it to do that yet. I'm sure it's probably in the pipe somewhere but that's that's the beast all right any questions so far guys no all right tell me about your own workflows do you have anything in your own workflows where this you you want to want me to add something so that you could see how it would potentially work for you i know john you're trying to move off of powerpoint but do you have anything specifically that would help you in your organization use it? Uh, John, all we've been doing is working with the reference guide. It's working pretty well, actually. And we built it into, into the product itself. We've isolated the database. We've fed it its own. And it's actually answers 
questions pretty pretty efficiently. That's really what we've been working on. Mm. My next thing is to try and get quotations, especially state and government, is trying to get AI to pull a uh, you know make a bid for me. Is actually pull the document, show our capabilities, and bid. We're playing around with that now. <clears throat> Gotcha. That's, that's kind of where okay. I am. Okay. Interesting. Anybody else working uh, with it? What about so uh, a results? If it's working, not working, you know, you have the stage, but it's, you have it. Where do you put that information? That's a good question. I mean, the, the stage, um, you know, if it's approved, that's essentially saying it's working. One right. of the, the uh, things that we had in there was we had another field it was a, a rating, you know, one to five. And if that rating dips below like a, a four, then we know it's time for us to go look at that prompt again, because, you know, sometimes they just don't work like they used to. We have, we have a really long form blog uh, prompt right now that is underperforming. And so it's moved back into another uh, stage. I don't know, John, did that kind of answer your question or is, or is that how you're yeah, using that, it? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's how we do it. Um, and I want to show you a couple of them just so you can kind of see how we play along. And if I go back over here and pop in here, this is the, um, the things that I'm going to be sending to you. All right. Um, let me let me just do something real quick uh, while I've got it. I don't know where. Nope. Uh, hang on a second. I'm going to stop my screen share. I have, as you might imagine, millions of windows open and I don't want to waste your time by flipping through all these. Okay. All right. Because I know Corinne had to eject. So let me go back to sharing my screen here with you. All right. Now, all of these you know, again, are, are more than your average bear would uh, probably use, and they're fairly complicated. But that's why it's critical that we use this in our operation, especially as we start working with clients. Um, I don't know whether Eric's on the call or not, but when we're working with our clients, we'll create a lot of these for them. And so we have another field that says this is client specific. And that way we can take all of those prompts out and then we can uh, duplicate them over into the client's own notion file. It just makes it a whole lot more effective. Now, here's the thing. I will tell you this. Um, I want to give you this, um, but because I was out of commission last week, I didn't finish uh, going through all these. And you can see that they're in various states here. Uh, most of these are actually approved. I just haven't turned the code. So what I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to paste a link. And if you want to, if you want to get a copy of this, you just fill that form out. And as soon as it's ready, I'm going to send you the link to it so that you can have access to it. Okay. Just, um, and some of you have already done that, but it just, it'll speed up your life. <laughs> and again, I'm going to throw in all of these in this quick start set. I want to kind of go through again. I'm going to show you just, why these aren't your your average run of mill prompts? Like for instance, you've heard of an elevator pitch before, right? A USP, anything like that. Um, sometimes it's really, really typical or really, really tricky uh, when you're working with a client to say, "Tell me what you do," and you got thirty seconds, right? And they really have a hard time articulating it. So I thought, well, let's just see how bad Chat GPT can be when it does that. And so what I did is I like, okay, I'm going to give it some samples of one sentencers, you know, that we know are, are good in the direct response world. And, and um, this process, by the way, of giving it examples is really a cool one. Uh, you can go onto any website, you can Google and say, give me the top 50 converting headlines, you know, for email subject lines, and it'll give you a lot of these. You just paste those in there as examples. And then 
you go through something like this, right? You give it the request. So there's several ways to style this, but this one is a fairly, this is a prompt stack, right? So I give it some examples and I'm basically saying, look, I want you to act as the CEO that offers this. I want you to use these examples as the foundation of it. I don't want you to actually quote them, but just say, look, this is kind of how I see this working. And then I want you to go through this loop here, identify and describe our ideal customer list, the top five problems that we solve, um, use visceral language and list the eight things that our clients fear most, right? So it gives you a whole bunch of things that you want ChatGPT to think through before it actually gives its answer. So you can see this is a pretty detailed uh, little prompt, but it's it's really effective in how it works. Now, doesn't mean it'll work every time and write the way you want to, which is why we have style prompts as well that we'll put into, say, uh, custom instructions. So you can see, let's see. Some of you have seen this. Maybe it's in here. Yeah, if I go over here, like, for instance, we have all these variables that we would adjust that would give it our tone. And if you were in, I think it was like seven meetings ago where we taught people how to analyze for tone and style and write in your, what we call a brand voice DNA, uh, you can get ChatGPT to actually solve for these variables, all right? And once it does that, then you just use this inside of either custom instructions or at the beginning of the prompt, and it will then write the way you want it. So now you get an idea of why we're doing this prompt stacking, right? Because we're trying to get chat GPT to do specific things. And sometimes you have to stack a couple of prompts together. Is that making sense for everybody? Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure, because I know we covered that in a previous episode as well. And uh, you can see that this one has a follow-up prompt, but this isn't really a follow-up prompt. This is custom instructions. So if you remember in custom instructions, you have two blocks to fill in and you got, I think it's 1300 or 1500 words in each block. This is what you would put in block one. This is what you'd put in block two. Okay. Block two is basic. And you, uh, ironically enough, you can flip flop them. You can put one in block two, one in block one. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, but what it does is Anything that you write from that point on in chat GPT is going to write in that particular style. I'm sure y'all have used custom instructions before, right? Has everybody used it before? Okay. Wait, I see you nodding your head. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, uh, Christy, you haven't, you haven't used it yet. Art, you haven't used it yet. Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to show you where uh, to push that. And I'll show you also kind of the, there's a trick to it, okay? I just got to get all my windows to behave here. All right. Oh, good question box. Which, which, which box did we check on the sign up form? Um, there's a, you, you could check either one of them. Obviously, the, the first one is free. There's a cost for the other ones um, because the last one is the really, really advanced one. And, and that's where we actually do some training with people. I'll end up sending you a link to a page that it describes all that. It's uh, just not ready for prime time yet. Christy, you haven't received the sign up confirmation email yet. What was that for? Kelly, I may let you uh, work with Christy on that. Yeah, you could check the spam folder. A lot of those get caught in spam. Okay, so in terms of custom instructions, if you go down here, all right, um, you do have to go over here and turn on, uh, actually, you don't, do you? Where was it? I think they just, yeah, they, it, it comes with it now. Um, okay, but it's right here as custom instructions. And then you can see that I've got, my style and I've got the exclusions in here. And this is, uh, I, I, didn't, I can't remember where the art, you asked me about this a while back, but how do you get it to quit saying stupid stuff? This is how you get it to quit saying stupid stuff, right? 
you write a code that says exclusions, and then you list all the stupid stuff that you're sick of hearing it say, <laughs> and it'll do that. All right. And then you just turn, you enable it for new chats, and then you hit save. Now, here's the thing that you need to know about that. If you have it on, then everything you do from this point forward in this particular session is going to use that. If you have it off and you start a conversation, you can't turn it on and have it work. So it, it is what it is. It's the same up here, right? If you have plugins enabled and you start the conversation, you're stuck with those plugins for that conversation, no matter whether you come back to it, you know, in three weeks or whatever, you're still stuck with that configuration. So think of it that way. It's a permanent configura configuration for that conversation. Now, the problem that I have had is that I'll go over here and I'll use one of these prompts and I will forget that I have custom instructions turned on and custom instructions will override what I've basically put in there. Uh, John Thompson, as a, as a for instance, when we were running your competitive analysis the other day, I forgot that I had custom instructions on. And so it was really toning down the detail of that response. Had I turned custom instructions off, it would have given me a lot more detail and it would have been a lot more uh, sophisticated, if you will, in the language that it was using. All right. Okay. So just make sure you do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's very handy, you know, to use this, especially if you are working with clients. And I know Corinne works with clients. Any of y'all work with clients or are you all just working with your own companies? Myself. John, you're just yourself. Andy, I know you work with clients, right? <laughs> uh, so th that's the key. So what you would do inside of your prompt database is you, would, like I said, you would designate them as client specific, notate the client, and then you just make sure that you're running the client's custom instructions as you're getting it to write stuff. When I go into some of our more advanced things, like I had to build uh, 14 pages for a client, 14 web pages for a client off of what was a three page website and each page had one paragraph, right? So I had to, you know, do a whole lot of writing. Um, so I had to create a style for them. And then I had to basically build a framework around who they were, what problems they solved and everything else. That then became a, a context prompt that I would constantly use. Uh, Joanne, you've, you've been there before? <laughs> yeah. So, but that's what's so great about this. Once you have the prompt that'll generate that content um, and it'll put it in the style of your own client, then you become far more efficient. Now, Joanne, do you, will you work with clients? Were you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. So we've got a couple of clients now and uh, the the difficulty has been exactly that, trying to change the tone for each one. And so I really like the fact that you address that. Uh, <laughs> there's so much work that I need to do on here, but I'd love to chat with you. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. There's a lot of, before I go prompting, there's a lot of de-identification that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And that takes me so much time before I can even get into the prompting. So that's probably a prompt. <laughs> I All just right. think through it. Give me an idea what you mean, Jillian, about de-identification. Sure. So I'm sitting here looking at uh, mounds and mounds of, of data, and yet one of the rows has uh, patient information in it, names, date of birth, mm -hmm. whatever a okay. person decides that they want to put into our bot it's there. So I can't just take that raw data and put it into GPT or any of the tools. I have to de-identify it. So I have to find every name in there and take it out before I can use it. Or I can use the data separately, which is what I'm trying to do now, and use some other identifier without putting that information in 
to try to figure out how many times they open the bot, uh, which ones are test, which ones are useful, which yeah. ones are analyzed further without actually using that column to put it into the system. Okay. Yeah. So, the combination of the two, but I'm not very efficient at it yet, but I need this type of structure that I'm looking at on your screen <laughs> to get there. Yeah, it, it's definitely helpful. Yeah, um, I don't know if that made sense, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> working on it while I'm talking to you here. Yeah, just, really. <laughs> okay. Yeah, surprise. interestingly enough, I, I had to do a little, well, uh, to a lesser extent. Um, I had a database of... Uh, 7,000 records, way too much for chat GPT to absorb. So I still had to kind of uh, sanitize it because I didn't want client names in there. It wasn't HIPAA, but I didn't really want to disclose that to whatever AI tool I was using. Right. So I ran a column and did a um, kind of a formula inside of Excel that just converted the name to, you know, customer one, two, three, or whatever it might be. Um, and then I got rid of some superfluous columns and then I uploaded it into um, Claude uh, as a, uh, a CSV. And uh, Claude did some work with it. It was, it was pretty interesting. I, I, I wasn't probably doing what you're doing, but it, it did, I did kind of work. No, you're absolutely right. And I've got macros that do that for my client names. It's the client yeah. patient names that are this massive unknown as to what degree they put them in there in their database births. Right. It's just very raw transcript data. So yeah, yeah I'd, I'd love to explore that with you. Yeah, love to. Love to. Thank you. Andrew, does everyone turn history off? Um, no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> The reason I don't is because once you do, it wipes out everything. Um, and I don't really want to wipe out everything. So I, I kind of keep it in there. Well, that's Barry. Um, so that's what I try to do is I um, I try to clean the data before I throw it in there. I just don't want to, um, I don't want to, I, I don't mind uploading financial data as long as the model doesn't know who it belongs to. Does that make sense? You know, so that's that's essentially how I'm protecting client privacy. I'm just not telling it whose data this is or uh, what those records belong to. So I do try to protect it that way. I but agree. on the history part, what we do have is we have multiple accounts and I have one account, though, that I would use in that manner, where it's 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 my exclusive privacy one, where I would turn that history off so that it doesn't feed the model. So, and Joanne Gore, it sounds like you work with clients, and you said you had a, a typical day. Tell me what that typical day looks like. Oh. I mean, just the idea of you have a sentence of text or or a paragraph and you're supposed to make like an ebook out of it or or who knows right. what. So and I'm very, very sort of green to all of this. I mm -hmm. for me, it's trial by error. One of the first prompts that I started using is when I'm working with a company to get to figure things out is what do you I asked ChatGPT, what do you know about? And then I put the company in and I wait and see what it tells me. If it if there's a lot there, then I'm like, okay, it knows enough to pull that information and turn it into something. I run with it. If not, then I start feeding it. Okay, here's what you need to know about this company. And then I go from there. But I just found that that one, and maybe I'm crazy, but just asking that first question of what do you know about helps mm -hmm. me figure out what the next prompt needs to be to be able yeah. to do what I need it to do as quickly as humanly possible yeah, right. so that I can get this content running from blogs yeah. to ebooks to web pages to case study Whatever anything and everything. Yeah. So what you'll see, um <clears throat> first of all, that's that's a test you can run using 3.5. It'll be a whole lot faster because the data is is still cut off at 2021. Um, the problem is you don't have current data with that. 
So um, what one of our, <laughs> like, like one of our prompts right here, it analyzes the URL. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am. Um, and rewrite it with new parameters. You just basically paste in the URLs, especially like uh, we did it a couple of weeks ago with John Thompson, where I pasted in URLs for the company and pasted in URLs for the competition. And I just said, I want you to analyze these and tell us where we're different and how we can stand out. And then go get a cup of coffee. You know, sometimes it, it's slow, but it'll at least pull down uh, current data. But, you know, I, I like your thinking is like, OK, do I do I have to go through this because it, it'll it'll spin the clock. It's funny how impatient we get, right? It does it in yeah. seconds. Oh, I know, a, I know. Right? But it's, and it's funny because now I'm trying to figure out mid journey, which is a whole other layer of hell that I didn't realize I'd immerse myself <laughs> in. And I went to ChatGPT and I said, teach me how to use mid journey. And it couldn't. It said, well, I don't right. I don't know what mid journey is. Talking. And I'm like, how do right. you not know what mid journey is? You're supposed to be able to talk to mid journey. So right. I was like, right. I, I just it was be that's where I start to lose my patience. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, I want to come back to that point, but John, you had John Lawler, you had your hand up. Uh so ask okay. away. Okay, back to the custom instructions. Um, do yeah. you leave the uh, the checkbox for enable for new chats on or off? Um, I usually you leave it on, but that's why I said I got to remember that I left it on if I don't want it on, you know, because um, most of the time I'm doing repetitive tasks and I need it to be on. Okay. You know, like if I'm going to write uh, an email to somebody or if I'm going to write a Web page for somebody or if I'm going to write a landing page or whatever, I, I want to just keep it going. Um, it, it doesn't really matter until you uh, like one of the, the, the style points uh, that I have in there is like a, a certain humor level. Mm -hmm. And I always know when I ask it to do something and it'll go, all righty, then, you know, it'll start off with something really goofy. I'm like, oh, I left it in there, you know, so you'll you'll have some dead giveaways. But uh, one of the things um, to Joanne's point that I wanted to get to was. Um, how do you figure out what's it doing um, with the plugins? So let me see if I can uh, find this prompt. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, this is in the quick start. <clears throat> if you want to know what a plugin does, you can ask Chat GPT, but you have to have the plugin turned on. Um, so that's one of the tools. Now you can go to some of these websites and they'll tell you all the different plugins and they'll give you some descriptions, um, which is handy, but sometimes I don't have that kind of time. You know, I, I scan through it, I look at it, I'm like, okay, how do I use this beast? That's what this, this one does. But, Perfect. you know, again, you have to Thank have you. it turned on. Yeah, you bet. And the, But the thing that burns me up is that you have to have it turned on. You know, I'd like to be able to just give it a list of plugins and say, tell me how to use these things and, mm -hmm. and let it fish it out. But it, it ain't that smart, unfortunately. So it won't, it won't quite get there, but you do have to have it turned on. Uh, let's see, Andrew, another site that keeps up to date on AI tools. Tool, what, with three O's? Or is that a typo? Andrew B.? You're muted. Anyway, I don't know whether that's uh said yes to the three O's. In the it's got three O's. Okay. Fabulous. Sorry, I wasn't scrolling down. Uh is it automatically available with the GPT for yes? Uh Andrew Andrew's on the on it for me, answering him. Okay. <laughs> All right. So both of y'all use it, Christy too. Okay, cool. There was another one that um, I was notified of the other day. There's several of them out there uh, that'll keep you up to date on different AI tools. I did notice, I, I'm sure that some of you have um, actually used the plugins. There's an AI for that. Uh, there, there are several of them. Let's see. Plugin AI. There's an AI for that, right? <clears throat> if you use this, this is kind of interesting. 
you just say, uh, find me an AI tool that does whatever, right? Okay. And then you'll see it tap into that particular tool, right? And it'll give you a list of them. And I think we covered this in the previous episode. Uh, oh, look, you can see that I have my custom instructions set on. John, you're in luck. <laughs> if it wasn't on, it wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> um, but the thing that I did notice about all of these is their affiliate links. Brilliant business model, right? You know, if you click on it, you can read about it. And then you click from over there, you can clearly see in the URL, there's an affiliate link associated with, with a referral tag. So it's pretty, pretty select, but it's helpful nonetheless. And this finds really obscure tools. You know, uh, I think if you go to Google, you might find more uh, popular ones, but this, this is, I, I, it's, I would call it more startup-y in nature. Uh, a lot of the tools that it finds. But it's always interesting. I found some really interesting tools doing this. So I don't know whether any of y'all have ever used that before or not. Andy, what about you? Have you used any of these things? Very few. Um, I'm starting to use some of the plugins on ChatGPT, um, including a PDF reader that you can have a conversation with. Yeah. Um, so I'm using, I'm using it, uh, I'm generating interviews or having interviews with thought leaders and organizations I'm working with. And then using that because it's like 20 or 30,000 words interviews and then generating, um, really interesting content ideas for blog posts and other media, yeah. uh, to push out. Uh, -huh. interesting. Angie, uh, no, I'm not a mind reader. What, <laughs> I wish I was. Uh, what was the what was it you asked the, the Slack channel? Did you come off mute? Sorry, I had to look for the unmute. Um, <laughs> I've got a bunch of pitch decks that I need to combine into one, and then dedupe. Hmm. I figure there's uh, got to be a tool. It's like it's like VLOOKUP for for PowerPoint, right? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, there's there's bound to be a tool, um, but there are a couple of these inside of the plugin store. So um, you would want to go in and check. And let me see if I were to go. Uh, the weird thing about the plugin store, and I'm sure some of you have experienced this frustration, is that if one of these plugins goes out of business, you can't delete it. If one of these plugins comes up with an updated version, you still can't delete it. So it's it's really frustrating. Uh, Christy, here, I'll show you real quick. Um, first, you go down here to the settings and you go to beta features and you make sure that plugins is turned on. And you want to make sure advanced data analysis is turned on too. That was formerly known as code interpreter. You can use both of those and they're really, really cool. Once you do that, then you're just going to simply go up here. Whoops, let's just go to a new chat so you can see it from the get-go. If I go to a new chat, see up here, I can uh, choose advanced data analysis and run it. You can only do one of these at, at a time. This one is no plugins. This is uh, with uh, AD, uh, ADA running, and then this is the plugins. Once you do that, you enable the plugin store. You can scroll. Of course, I have a ton of them on. So you have to scroll way down, hit the plugin store, and then click on all, do a search, or you can look at popular or whatever. But if I were to do AI tools, you can see there's AI tool hunt, toolbox, open tools, different, different ones. That's the one I've got uh, also, but you can find a, a few of them in here. And then you just install them. Now, again, the problem I have is if you if you look at these things, these indicators sometimes indicate that there's no privacy or they don't meet the privacy policy. Other times it means taint in the store no more. All right. <clears throat> and so if it isn't in the store, you can't delete it. And sometimes you'll see some of these. Let me see if I got any. Yeah. See, the icon's missing, so you know it's not in the store anymore, but I can't delete the doggone thing. So maybe one day they'll address this. 
but it's frustrating. The only way you can delete it is if it's still in the store. So Zillow isn't in there anymore, so I don't have a way to delete it. But if I were to go, let's say, to pick any one of these, like this one, summarize, I could just hit uninstall, boom, and it's uninstalled. But if they remove it from the store before you've had a chance to uninstall it, stuck on your list, I'm afraid. All right. Um, let's see, Kelly, only three plugins can be used in chat GPT question. Correct. Um, hey, one other thing I did notice uh, since we're closing in on the buzzer, on custom instructions, I'm sure some of you have already noticed, but custom instructions applies to 3.5 and 4. Did you know that? I always thought it was just four, but it'll actually manipulate stuff in 3.5. So depending upon what you put in there, style points, maybe not so much. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Any other thoughts, concerns, issues? Was this helpful? Yeah. Learn something new, I hope. And yeah, if you want to fill out that thing, I will be happy to send you this database. And that way it'll save you a whole lot of time and it will give you all those other ones you can have at it. And uh, hopefully that was beneficial. So I appreciate everybody joining. Andrew had to uh, turn off a plugin. The best practice uh, as opposed to letting three enabled. Um, so here's the deal. Theoretically, GPT will decide which one to use. Um, I have noticed that if there's two, if two of them are too similar, it'll collide, and then you'll you'll actually see GPT just break. It just says there's a network error or something. So I generally don't want to have multiple ones that 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 go out into the web and search at the same time. So somewhat uh, answering your question, I know. But any other ones around there? Okay, Andy had a bulb. Uh, Big Jason, you got the sign up URL. Great. Okay, Dax, good to see you again. Everybody, I appreciate you all coming. If you have any questions, feel free to hop into our community and ask away. If I can help you, I'd be happy to. Uh, we're, we just launched that community a couple of weeks ago, so we have not been really busy communicating in it, but we're getting ready to get really active in that community. So once again, Raul, did you, oh yeah, applause. I love it. I was, <laughs> I was like, did you have a question? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for your time. And if you have any needs, just feel free to reach out to me, email or in the group, and we'll see y'all next time. All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye. So